hello people how are you in this video let us look at some mcqs uh, on this topic ear okay so let us look at some mcqs otosclerosis affects which bone so you saw the answer already otosclerosis affects mostly the stapes bone okay so where is the stapes bone here okay so this is the stapes bone here otosclerosis mostly okay let's move on all our tuning folks uh, tuning fork tests except what do you think the answer is schwabach's test you have seen this tuning fork test rennes test weber's test all tuning forks test so answer here is b right okay then next question which of the following causes the opening of eustachian tube so which muscle or they are asking what causes the opening of eustachian tube the answer is C tensor veli palatini that is the muscle where is this tensor veli palatini let us look at that have they shown the muscles here yeah this is the eustachian tube so the muscle that makes it open is tensor veli palatini so guys this tensor veli palatini is here from the palate it is going see tensor veli palatini and this is the eustachian tube okay so you should not get confused with tensor tympani the muscle that opens it is tensor veli palatini muscle okay so let us see the answer answer is c tensor veli palatini now let's move on during the examination of the ear during ear examination cough occurs due to stimulation of so when you are examining the ear the cough occurs why does it occur guys cough so why does this cough occur what do you think the answer is the answer is d vagus nerve okay shall we move on to the next question okay ramsey hunt syndrome in ramsey hunt syndrome all are true except so what is this ramsey hunt syndrome first of all because of herpes zoster i think so yes seventh nerve is involved that is nothing but facial nerve right facial muscles are involved seems about appropriate okay facial vesicles are seen on the face are there any vesicles i think this is wrong the vesicles are not on the face but elsewhere what do you think yes the answer is c this is wrong why because if you see ramsey hunt syndrome there is uh, a facial muscles are affected yes but the lesions the vesicles whatever they telling they are in the ear oral cavity tongue so basically here the answer will be facial vesicles are not seen facial vesicles vesicles are not on the face so herpes zoster is the virus yes that is correct so where and now you will see the vesicles pre auricular skin behind the uh, be in front of the ear pinna right pre auricular skin skin of the ear canal soft palate but it is not on the facial skin okay next question guys so how is it going till now are you able to get some uh, idea okay so you are able to solve also okay good so let's continue so <clears throat> which fracture of the petrous bone will cause facial nerve palsy which fracture of the petrous bone longitudinal fracture transverse fracture okay facial nerve injury so basically which fracture so this seems to be one of these and in this the most common is b that's what they are saying transverse fracture so what is transverse like horizontal type of a thing right that is transverse okay so facial nerve palsy fracture of petrous bone e both of these can cause okay but transverse fracture is more common that's what they are saying what is this fourth option Tra facial nerve injury is always complete what is this okay let's move on to the next question facial nerve palsy is seen in sarcoidosis varicella zoster virus is it acoustic neuroma all facial nerve palsy is seen in varicella zoster okay that's the zoster we saw some question with herpes zoster right that was ramsey hunt syndrome okay so the answer here is all okay all of these 
can cause facial nerve palsy. What is sarcoidosis? So sarcoidosis is growth of tiny collections of inflammatory cells in different parts of the body. So inflammatory cells, multiple organs, granulomas will be there. But why is this? What is this acoustic neuroma? So this acoustic schwan, um, neuroma is nothing but vestibular schwannoma, neurilemoma, eighth nerve tumor. So some tumor on the eighth nerve. This is okay. Guys, this acoustic neuroma is a very important topic. Okay. So let's note this. It's a really an important thing. So in all these cases, they can be facial nerve palsy. That's all we had to answer here. Let's move on. Okay, here. Frey's syndrome is due to the involvement of Frey's syndrome you have seen guys right uh, that um, when they eat the they sweat if you remember this see so when they eat they sweat why does this happen this patch of skin parotid gland the nerves have got mixed up which nerves have got mixed up the auriculotemporal nerve which is a secretory motor nerve right because it's supposed to secrete it joins up with the great auricular so, uh, which is a sensory nerve. So, great auricular and auriculotemporal have got joined. Okay. So, Frey syndrome is due to the involvement of which nerve? Auriculotemporal nerve. Yes. Let's see the answer. Yes, it is auriculotemporal nerve. Okay. Okay. So, let's move on, guys. What do you say? Shall we move on to the next question? Take a break. Take a deep breath. Okay. Now, schwannoma involves dash, vestibular part of this cochlear. See, schwannoma is a very common word actually, isn't it? That's what we studied in pathology. Let's look at the answer here. They're talking about the ear. So, anyways, vestibular part of the eighth nerve. Okay. So, if you remember the ear anatomy, go back here. Where is the vestibular part? Here you have the vestibular part, right? Wait. This is the vestibular part of the eighth nerve. Here you have the cochlear part of the eighth nerve. These two will join and become the vestibulocochlear nerve. So they are saying the vestibular nerve schwannoma. Okay. Then next question. We saw the answer. Yeah. Next question guys. Acoustic neuroma. I told you right. Acoustic neuroma they seem to be interested a lot about acoustic neuroma. What is it? So basically it is a benign tumor only. So it arises from what? Upper pole displaces what nerves? Lower pole displaces what nerves? So what do you think the answer is guys? The answer is B. True. What is true? It arises from the vestibular nerve. Actually if you look at this diagram. Here you have the vestibular nerve. Okay, It's going behind this facial nerve. So all this is vestibular nerve. Then cochlear nerve is there here. So they are saying this is also vestibular part. This is coming from the ampullas, this is coming from the macula, right? So the acoustic neuroma, they are saying it affects the vestibular, arises from the vestibular nerve. Where were we here? True about acoustic neuroma, it arises from vestibular nerve. Okay. Yes, here they are saying the nerves that it will affect, right? So basically, let us look at some information here. The upper pole will displace 3, 4, 5 and the lower pole will displace this is what 9, 10, 11th nerve. Okay. Third, fourth, fifth nerves, upper, lower will be 9, 10th and 11th nerve. Okay. You can just look at more details about that. Let's move on. The earliest symptom of acoustic nerve tumor. What do you mean by acoustic nerve now? Let's look at the answer here. A. Sensory neural hearing loss. When they are saying acoustic nerve, they mean the entire vestibulocochlear nerve. Okay, the eighth cranial nerve. So they are talking about both the parts here, the cochlear part and the vestibular part. So acoustic nerve means you can consider both the, it as the eighth cranial nerve. Okay. So here they are saying the earliest symptom will be the sensory neural hearing loss. Okay. Let's move on. Earliest sign seen in acoustic neuroma is, isn't this the same type of question? Reduced corneal reflex. Didn't they talk about, um, 
Didn't they call, talk about earlier sense? Acoustic nerve, tumor. This one they are saying acoustic neuroma. Okay, here the catch is sign. Here they are saying the earlier sign. Sign is something that a doctor catches, right? What about this? This is a symptom. Symptom is what the patient's patient presents with. So he will come with what? Sensory neural hearing loss. What will you find? You will find reduced corneal reflex. Okay. Corneal means what? Something to do with the eye, right? See guys, actually in this, the first thing that will get involved, the earliest nerve to be involved will be the trigeminal nerve. So here there will be reduced corneal sensitivity, numbness, paresthesia of face, etc. So involvement of this nerve indicates the tumor is how much size, etc. So basically this is the earliest sign. Sign here will be the C, reduced corneal reflex. Okay. So is this clear guys? So hope you are learning something. Let's move on. What do you say? In acoustic neuroma, the cranial nerve to be involved earliest is, we already told you the answer, it is the trigeminal, so answer is A, that is fifth cranial nerve. Acoustic neuroma causes, now let's try to answer this one, we have seen so much about acoustic neuroma. Cochlear deafness, retrocochlear deafness, conductive deafness, any of the above. I don't like this any of the above, let's see the answer, would you say? See, because... Sensory neural deafness is the first symptom the patient presents with it, they said. So if there is sensory neural deafness, definitely it is not conductive deafness. So we'll remove this. This is not what we are looking for. So obviously, okay, then cochlear deafness, retrocochlear deafness. Let's see the answer. B. Oh, there is a term called retrocochlear deafness. So this is the answer. Okay. So retrocochlear deafness, guys. This cochlear deafness usually happens if there is damage to hair cells. In many years you can see this cochlear deafness, okay? And in this retrocochlear deafness, retro, retro means what very old, some style or fashion from the past, right? Okay, anyways, so basically in this retrocochlear hearing loss, that is in acoustic neuroma, what will be there? Here the sensory neural hearing loss will be more in high frequency, there will be poor discrimination score, 0 to 30 percent, recruitment phenomena absent and rollover phenomena will be present, discrimination score further decreases when loudness is increased beyond a particular point, short inter increment, short increment sensitivity index that is SISI, SI. this test will show a score of 0 to 20 percent in 70 to 90 percent cases, tone decay significant. If you understood it, then great. Otherwise, just remember there is retrocochlear deafness in acoustic neuroma. Okay. So here the one thing that at least you understood is the sensory neural hearing loss will be more marked in high frequencies. Sounds something like a uh, press by cuses. Let's move on guys. Shall we? Okay. Acoustic neuroma all are seen except loss of corneal reflex. We saw this now. This is the sign. So this will be there. Facial palsy not complete, okay guys. So facial palsy won't be there. So acoustic neuroma don't say facial palsy. Tinnitus diplopia can be there. Tinnitus very early it will be there. Diplopia will be a late feature, okay. So facial palsy you can rule out guys. So answer here is facial palsy. So the, this is kind of though it has some pressure on acoustic, um, on the facial nerve etc. Facial palsy they are not saying is associated, okay. Next question here in a patient with acoustic neuroma all are seen except. Again it's an except question. So facial nerve may be involved, reduced corneal reflex. See facial nerve may be involved, this is kind of always a maybe with facial nerve, okay. Reduced corneal reflex, yes this is a sign. Acute episode of vertigo. So vertigo will not be there guys. Look at this answer is D. Vertigo will not be there. Acute episode of vertigo they are not mentioning. So except goes with acute episode of vertigo. Okay. Fine guys. Cerebellar signs can be there. In acoustic neuroma the earliest ocular finding is. In acoustic neuroma the earliest ocular finding. So here the earliest Symptom they told you, earlier sign also they told you. They want to know the earliest ocular finding. So what do you think the answer is? Answer is D. You already saw this. Loss of corneal reflex itself is the earliest sign. So that can be the earliest ocular sign obviously. So this will be the answer. It's not an except question. 
let's make it green okay this is the answer in acoustic neuroma the earliest ocular finding is the loss of corneal reflex treatment for choice treatment of choice for acoustic neuroma so now we have reached some question on the treatment of this acoustic neuroma what do you think you will treat it with our options are steroid radiotherapy anti neoplastic drug surgery so the answer here they're saying is surgery surgery is their choice it seems according to the textbook surgical removal of the tumor is the treatment of choice surgical approach will depend upon the size of the tumor various approaches are there middle crania fossa approach trans labyrinthine approach sub occipital that is retro sigmoid approach combined trans labyrinthine sub occipital approach so many approaches are there surgery is a treatment of choice for what for acoustic neuroma have you seen the neuroma acoustic neuroma this one they are saying they will remove it surgically that's the best thing to do next question for you the usual location of glomus tumor jugular 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 tumor is there something like this really yes it is there glomus jugular tumor so you tell the usual location where will this location be there see in this jugular uh, what am i saying glomus tumor right you have glomus jugular jo glomus tympanicum and anything else is there okay two they have mentioned here in what basically this is a benign tumor glomus tumor it's the most common benign neoplasm of the middle ear it is uh, from the glomus bodies so why do they have this name because they resemble carotid body in the structure which are found in the dome of the jugular bulb so they named it something like this okay so the usual uh, location of glomus jugular a tumor we already told you it's a middle ear benign tumor so what do you think is it middle ear means what it will be not this not this so these two are wrong so what is the answer here it will be epitympanum or hypotympanum because it has to be middle ear so the answer here is hypotympanum hypotympanum is the answer okay let's move on guys this fi SCH classification is used for what? It's used for glomus tumor. What do you say? Yes, answer is glomus tumor. So they are using this FISCH classification. Okay. Type A, type B, type C, type D. So type A is it's there only in the middle ear. Type D it has reached the intracranial extension. So it looks like type B has extended more. What do you say? Guys, are you ready to take a few more uh, questions on ear? In cochlear implants, electrode must are most commonly placed at. So, if you know in middle ear, here you have the oval window and round window. Oval window is where the stapes foot plate will go, right? Round window is the fenestra cochlea. So, fenestra cochlea means. it uh, opens where it round window round window see oval window stapes round window will do what a small round opening it is uh, separates the middle ear from the scalar tympani so this is what we want right so it should be round window what is the answer round window see guys this one is the scala vestibuli middle you have the scala media and down you have the scala tympani scala vestibuli you have the oval window scala tympani you have the round window right stapes actually works on oval window now they are saying cochlear implant you are giving so this entire thing you are seeing this is cochlear so you are giving cochlear implant okay and they are saying the answer is round window okay let us see where will you place the electrode you will place it at the round window so the electrodes in cochlear implants are most commonly placed at a round window so basically it's most commonly only they are saying here in this photo very clearly they have shown that see going through the round window kind of a thing because stapes is here you can clearly see it's not on the oval window it's on the round window okay 
electrodes they have shown here it's going through the round window okay guys uh, what you should understand in the mechanism of hearing you have understood how the hearing happens right so what happens the stapes will uh, act on the oval window then the perilymph will move so the perilymph where in the scala vestibuli will move there is a displacement of fluid even in the scala media the basilar membrane okay there is a bulging of basilar membrane towards round window the fluid in tympanic scala tympani also will move okay the movement of the scala tympani fluid also will occur towards the round window right and then this basilar membrane because of this there is wave okay towards the helicotrema so basically this is the traveling wave theory okay so round window is where you will place the electrode in cochlear implant okay let's move on all of the following diseases have a consistent symptom of tinnitus except tinnitus you have seen in uh, minias yes we have seen in minias so this is a green we have seen it there otosclerosis will have tinnitus this is what chronic superative otitis media yes otitis media see this i think the answer is mastoiditis you know because mastoiditis is somewhere away from the parts we are talking about what do you say let's look at the answer yes answer is mastoiditis so basically what is mastoiditis the inflammation of all the um lining of this air cells mastoid air cells you know what the mastoid is and all that right or should we explain that right so here you have the air cells right behind behind the ear that bone you have the mastoid air cells look at here this is the mastoid process inside that you have the air cells so whenever this gets infected and all you will have a mastoiditis so this doesn't cause tinnitus that is the ringing of the ear or ringing in the ear right tinnitus so that's not happening because of mastoiditis it can happen because of meniere's disease meniere's disease what endolymphatic hydrops chronic superitive otitis media that is infection of the middle ear can happen otosclerosis because of the problem with the uh, stapes being very stiff right can all that it can cause this ringing of the ear pars flacida of the tympanic membrane is also called as let's look at this if you remember our tympanic membrane anatomy and all that so here you have the anatomy the tympanic membrane the parts you have pars tensa and pars flacida pars tensa is the maximum part pars flacida is this portion it is also called as shrapnel's membrane this gray thing okay this is pars flacida it's also called a shrapnel's membrane okay so let us look at the answer here shrapnel's membrane guys basically where will you see this resnus membrane resnus membrane is in uh, the it is resnus membrane and basilar membrane these two are membranes of the scala media these are the borders of scala media right and what is the secondary tympanic membrane secondary tympanic membrane is nothing but the round window right so secondary tympanic membrane is a membrane closing the round window and separating the scala tympani from the middle ear so this separates the scala tympani from the middle ear this is where they are keeping the electrode also for that cochlear implant remember right let's move on now csf otor hoia is caused by so what is this otor hoia from discharge from ear see otor hoia is nothing but um, a discharge from the ear but here they are talking about csf discharge so that is really scary right leakage of the cerebrospinal fluid uh, into the middle ear cavity or mastoid air cells that's scary so why can this happen your options are rupture of tympanic membrane i don't think this should lead to some csf leakage fracture of cribriform plate cribriform plate then what else are the options parietal bone where is parietal bone here on top fracture of petrous part of temporal bone what do you think is the answer guys i have a feeling that okay let me not tell my feeling answer i will tell you answer is d fracture of petrous temporal bone oh okay the answer is the fracture of petrous temporal bone guys if it is congenital csf otor hoia then you can go for something called as this fissure okay but here they are not talking about the congenital okay they are saying cerebrospinal spinal fluid otor hoia this can be there in temporal bone fracture that is the petrous part of temporal bone that is this part 
right this is the pectoris part of temporal bone right so basically this part of it if it is fractured then it can lead to cerebrospinal spinal fluid otor hoya according to the textbook it is in the longitudinal fracture of the pectoris temporal bone longitudinal means how it will be this one axis of longitudinal fracture okay better to read some uh, standard books for this information okay now let's move on seagull speculum is used use of seagull speculum during an examination of the ear provides all except so here it's an except question what are they not using it for so three options are correct assessment of the movement of tympanic membrane removal of foreign body oops answer is visible okay as applicator of the powered antibiotic of ear so you can use it as an applicator you can use it to assess the movement you can use it for magnification but you cannot use it for removal of foreign body from the ear see if you remember we have seen this seagull speculum here right so they are trying to see something inside so you can definitely magnify so you can assess the movement you can use it to apply powdered antibiotic okay but you cannot remove any foreign body from the ear okay so congratulations guys you have finished this year mcqs video we just looked at a few mcqs only still so many mcqs are there um we will take them up slowly okay that's all for now guys bye bye